All right, so today we're going to be learning about chromatography. And today I'm really just going to be talking about the essential kind of theory of chromatography. There will be other lectures on the actual instrumentation. Chromatography is sort of old, and the word means color writing, right? Chromo for color, graphy for writing. Um, and so uh, it really has its start in plant dyes, where people would separate plant dyes. Uh, and notice that they would separate uh, into different colors. Um, separations, which is what we're really talking about, though, from a chemical point of view, are inherently difficult. And they're inherently difficult because we are fighting entropy. So when we do a separation, what we really want to do is get everything together in sort of a narrow band. Well, entropy, right, is mixing. It wants to mix things. It wants things to go apart and spread out. Uh, and so um, everything that we're doing in uh, separations and talking about for chromatography is really fighting entropy, um, uh, fighting things mixing out. So we need a little bit of terminology um, uh, as we uh, go on uh, in this. And we need terminology of sort of there are two phases when we're going to talk about chromatography. The first one is the mobile phase. And so the mobile phase is what is flowing through um, your column. And this is what you usually dissolve your analyte in. So you have a mobile phase, you'll have some analyte dissolved in it, it'll be flowing through your column. What's it flowing through? Right? The, it's flowing through another phase, that's the stationary phase. And so the stationary phase is your, is your column, what it's flowing through. Um, and so it's usually fixed in place. And again, your analyte can go uh, in and out of the stationary phase. And then separations, as long as you sort of have a liquid or a gas, we call that partitioning. So it can partition from the mobile phase into the stationary phase and back um, around. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about thermodynamics. So in the lecture part of your class, you learn a lot about thermodynamics. And really, separations are just applied thermodynamics. Um, and so I think it's useful to learn to, to, to sort of uh, connect what you learn in, you know, Chem 2820 lecture with uh, thermodynamics um, in the lab. So it all starts of, um, with uh, two phases. So we have mobile phase and stationary phase. And we have our analyte A. And our analyte A, again, can partition, can go between the two phases. So it can be in the stationary phase, stationary phase or it can be in the mobile phase. And uh, so it can go back and forth. And so you're a good student, right? You could write an equilibrium constant for this equilibrium if it was at equilibrium, right? So we'd say K, the equilibrium constant, would be equal to the concentration of A in the stationary phase divided by the concentration of A in the mobile phase. So you already know how to write that, right? Products over reactants. It's the same thing as any other equilibrium constant. But the question we kind of have in separations is this. Which phase does it want to be in? Does it want to be in the stationary phase? Does it want to be in the mobile phase? Right? That tells us how long our analyte's going to stay on our column and then how long it's going to take to come out. And so the answer to that uh, is actually a thermodynamic answer. The real answer, if you wanted to say it in words, which phase does it prefer? Um, the answer has to do with, right, chemical and intermolecular interactions. And how we characterize those, how do we get those into maybe like a number uh, in um, uh, chemistry, is the concept of chemical potential. So the symbol for chemical potential 
is mu, um, and the chemical potential is just this. The chemical potential of, um, let's do A, not I, of our analyte A is equal to dG dN. So you know G probably, right? G is gives free energy, right? So dG is delta G. Uh, and so you've learned about that um, in class. And this dn here is just the number of moles that are either entering or exiting the system. Entering down there. Uh, so, D, um, so if we're going to uh, add moles to the system, how much is that going to change our delta g uh, is basically what we're looking at. Now, there is some assumptions here, and that is that we assume that the temperature is constant, the pressure is constant, and the number of moles of anything else is constant. So I don't put in a couple moles of A and take out a couple moles of B. That's not allowed. But this chemical potential then, basically it's just delta G corrected for the number of moles. So it's delta G. Uh, it tells us something about what phase um, it's going to prefer. Um, so like with electrochemistry, we can write an equation We can write an equation uh, for our sort of a standard phase. So we could say the chemical potential of A in the mobile phase would be equal to a standard state mobile phase, that's the mu zero in the mobile phase, plus RT times the natural log of the concentration of A in the mobile phase. Um, and so, again, we have a standard state term. This tells us about the thermodynamics, the inter molecular interactions. This RT natural log of C is actually the entropy term, uh, telling us something about um, uh, the um, entropy or mixing of the system. Uh, and right, so this, again, is just a standard uh, free energy. And so standard, right, means that all the concent concentrations are equal to one, activities are equal to one, temperature is a standard temperature, pressure is you know, one atmosphere, that kind of thing. Um, but we have a closed system, right? We only have two places our molecule could go. A could be in the mobile phase, A could be in the stationary phase, can't be anywhere else. So that's a closed system. And so we need the uh, chemical potential of one has to equal the chemical potential of the other. Meaning if I'm putting moles of A from one to the other, you know, the chemical potential of one has to be equal to the chemical potential of the other. And so we could write then an equation uh, uh, that looks like this. So the concentration of A, uh, oops, I always get my, I always get my, exponents and subscripts and superscripts backwards. Because mobile chemical potential of A, zero, that's, a, that's the standard state in the mobile phase, plus RT times the natural log of the concentration of A in the mobile phase, is going to be equal to the, the same equation, but now I'm going to fill in uh, stationary phase. So instead of it's mobile phase on this side, stationary phase on that side, but the same equation. Um, as we look at that. So we have a closed system and so those things have to be equal. So let's look at this equation for a minute. Um, and so think to yourself, if, which, you know, if let's say the concentration of A in the mobile phase is higher than the concentration of A in the stationary phase, the question is which has the higher chemical potential? So which one has the higher chemical potential states? Look at it for a second and try and figure it out. All right, did you pause and try and figure it out? Uh, the concentration of A, let's look at this. Let's say this is high. That means that the concentration of A, this term over here, is low. Well, these things are equal to each other, right? So if this is higher and it's equal to something over here that's something plus lower, that means that this constant, this um, chemical potential, right, has to be lower than this one, that this one has to have the higher chemical potential if we're going to balance out the equation. So the one with the higher chemical potential in this case is the stationary phase. And so what you can see then that is 
the concentration is greater in the mobile phase, then the standard state chemical potential in the mobile phase is going to be less than the standard state chemical potential in the um, stationary phase. So you can see that that, mo that chemical potential basically is inversely proportional to mobile phase, uh, to concentration. And I don't think that that's always uh, very obvious to people. Um, we can go ahead and relate that back to K. Uh, and so we can put it back into our K equation. Um, if we uh, sort of rearrange, we'd basically be solving this equation Right, remember we had our K equation. Oh, I'm using C for concentration here, but uh, same deal. Concentration of A and stationary phase, concentration of A and mobile phase. So if we are going to rearrange this equation, uh, what we'd end up with is this. An exponential term. Um, uh, we have mu zero of A in the mobile phase minus mu zero of A in the stationary phase divided by RT. So that would all be e to that uh, term. So that's what k is. So now you see k, the um, equilibrium coefficient, relates to these chemical potentials. And so that's sort of how thermodynamics comes into play and which phase these things are going to be in.